Friends. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. The city of Jackson, Mississippi, is grieving today following the sudden death of Mayor Chokwe Lumumba, less than a year after he was elected. He suffered from heart failure Tuesday. He was 66 years old. A longtime black nationalist organizer and attorney, Lumumba had been described as America's most revolutionary mayor. Working with the Malcolm X grassroots movement, Lumumba advocated for participatory democracy and the creation of new worker-run cooperatives in Jackson. Over the past four decades, Lumumba was deeply involved in numerous political and legal campaigns. As an attorney, his clients have included former Black Panther Asada Shakur, as well as her godson, the late hip-hop artist Tupac Shakur. As a political organizer, Lumumba served for years as vice president of the Republic of New Africa, an organization which advocated for an independent, predominantly black government in the southeastern United States and reparations for slavery. He also helped found the National Black Human Rights Coalition and the Malcolm X grassroots movement. In June, Juan Gonzalez and I interviewed Chokwe Lumumba just after he was elected. We began by asking him how he was able to win the mayoral election in a place like Jackson, Mississippi, given its history and his history as a radical activist in the black liberation struggle. Uh, thank you for having me, and uh, uh, sh sh shout out and thank you to your listening audience. Uh, I attribute the victory that we had to uh, this uh, uh, last week uh, to the people, the people of Jackson, who were more than ready to have leadership that was forward-looking and ready to raise Jackson to a different level of development, uh, ready to embrace the ideas that all government should do the most to protect the human rights of the people uh, in that uh, jurisdiction. Uh, and we were very pleased with the outcoming of people to vote, uh, with their participation, uh, and with their continued support. Uh, we have—I'm uh, I'm now running for the mayor, or and have, in fact, won the mayor of the city of Jackson, uh, because I think it's necessary. Uh, we are a population here now in the need of a lot of development. Development is a— one of the tracks, or one of the roads to human rights and to the recognition of human rights, especially our economic human rights. And some of that development is uh, going to take the kind of leadership uh, and the kind of uh, consistency that we had in the struggle uh, for voting rights and other kinds of rights, uh, which has been uh, unique to our history. Well, Ashokwe Lumumba, I'm not sure that many people around the country understand the symbolic, uh, the symbolism of Jackson, uh, Mississippi, as a center of, uh, of, of, of racism and racial oppression over the, oh, really over centuries. Uh, the very name of the city, uh, the city was named after uh, Andrew Jackson by the white settlers when Jackson in 1820 uh, was able, as an Indian commissioner, uh, to uh, basically uh, pressure the Choctaw Indians to give up 13 million acres of land and move to Oklahoma uh, in the Treaty of Doak Stand. And they, that's why the white settlers named the city after Jackson, because of his success at ethnic cleansing. Uh, and then, of course, it's his history throughout the—through uh, slavery and Jim Crow. How did this change occur? How were you able to put this together, this coalition, to, uh, to be elected, uh, given your, uh, your history as a, uh, as a, a radical and an activist uh, uh, in, uh, in the black liberation struggle? I think it's a tribute to our consistency. It's a tribute to our uh, refusal to say that we would bow to the oppression that was around us. Uh, it's a tremendous story of our people. Uh, you talked about Mega Evers, uh, but the continuation since Mega Evers, uh, fighting against oppression, fighting against economic oppression, fighting against the kinds of things which have surfaced in our decades, uh, which are similar to the kinds of things you cite in the distant history of Jackson. Uh, we have been persistent, uh, and with that persistency, our people now are ready to move to a different level of development. Uh, and I should say that people should take a note of Jackson, uh, because we have suffered some of the worst kinds of abuses in history, uh, but we're about to make some uh, advances and some uh, strides in the development of human rights and the protection of human rights uh, that I think have not been seen in other parts of the country. 
And, and I want to uh, caution folks uh, that we got to be careful now when we talk about any one particular place in the United States. All over, uh, we've seen uh, intense oppression. I'm, I'm from Detroit initially, and we've seen a lot of oppression there historically as well as currently. New York has certainly seen its share. Uh, Washington, D.C. has seen its share. So we don't want to be like people on different plantations arguing about which plantation is worse. Uh, what we have to do is, contract, is, is to correct the whole problem, and we're about correcting the problem here in Jackson. And we're going to be inviting people to come here, and people want to come here uh, in order to participate in the struggle forward. And this is not a phony struggle. We're not just putting a false face. Uh, we, we, we tell you we've had real problems. We still have some real problems. But we're solving these problems, and we're going to try to solve a lot of them through economic development, which is going to involve the masses of the people, not just a few folks. Can you tell us about your platform and the Jackson Cush plan? Well, the platform is to advance the ideas of development and to advance the ideas of uh, uh, empowerment of the populations which exist in the city of Jackson specifically. Uh, we have uh, a, a population, a demographic here, 80 percent of the population is black, uh, about 20 percent is white, and we have Wolfus brothers and sisters who are East Indian origin, as well as some Asian and uh, some Hispanic folks coming in. Uh, our slogan was, uh, one city, one aim, one destiny. Uh, uh, and, and, and the idea is to blend these populations into a struggle forward. There are some people historically who have always tried to separate the populations and to have a certain portion of the population oppress the rest of the population. We're not going to tolerate that. We're going to move ahead. Uh, we're going to let everyone participate in this movement forward. We're going to invite everyone to participate in this movement forward. Uh, and, and we have formed like a people's assembly. And that's key to what we've done here, uh, where we have uh, every three months the population uh, can come out and participate in open form to say what's on their mind. They can come out and learn some of the uh, problems that the city is facing and some of the solutions that some of the problem uh, solvers are supposed to be offering. Uh, and this will bring about more public education and political education to the population of the city, make our population more prepared to be motivated and organized in order to participate uh, in the changes which must occur in the city of Jackson uh, in order to move it forward. We say the people must decide. Educate, motivate, organize. That's the slogan we use, right? The late Chokwe Lumumba, speaking on Democracy Now! on June 6th. He was elected mayor on June 5th, the mayor of Jackson, Mississippi. We're joined right now by three guests to talk about his shocking death, but also his life and his legacy. We're going to begin with Akinyele Umoja. He's an associate professor and chair of the Department of African American Studies at Georgia State University, a founding member, like Chokwe Lumumba, of the Malcolm X grassroots movement and the new African People's Organization. He's author of the book, We Will Shoot Back, Armed Resistance in the Mississippi Freedom Movement. He's joining us from Los Angeles, and we're going to be going to Jackson, Mississippi. Mississippi, as well as speak with the former head of the NAACP, Ben Jealous, on the phone. But let's go first uh, to his longtime ally. Um, we're joined right now by Kinyele Umoja. Can you talk about his life and what you understand happened yesterday, his death? Well, I'm in Los Angeles right now, so I can't give you a lot of details about his death. But I, in terms of his life, Shokwe Lumumba was born. 1948 in Detroit, Michigan. He grew up in a working-class family. He was a, a second oldest child in that family. His mother, and when he was a child, involved him in civil rights activity. Interestingly enough, they were raising money to go to Mississippi uh, to support the movement of Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee and other groups in Mississippi. Um, he became a student athlete. Uh, Shokwe was a very gifted athlete, went to Kalamazoo College, and there he became a student activist also. He, he was um, attracted to the Black Power Movement, particularly after the assassination of Martin Luther King. You know, like a, 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 a tremendous uh, uh, event occurred after the assassination of King. Many young black people joined the Black Power Movement, and Shokwe was attracted 
to a group in Detroit that was based in Detroit, the provisional government of the Republic of New Africa, uh, that demanded five states in the South, but also talked about creating a new society for black people, a society where there would be diversity, a society that would have um, cooperative economic and socialistic principles. And those are things that Shokwe carried with him to his last days. He believed in black self-determination. He believed that black people should form, and black people and other folks, because Shokwe was definitely an internationalist also, believed that <clears throat> there should be a new economic system that was more humanistic than the system we live in today. Uh, 1984, uh, Shokwe helped found the New African People's Organization, which would be more activist than the provisional government of the Republic of New Africa. And then a uh, companion with that in, in uh, 1990 formed the Malcolm X Grassroots Movement. Um, Shokwe uh, was actually drafted um, to run for mayor of Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, many people ever—he'd uh, been there, moved to Jackson in the late 80s, and he had been engaged in, uh, as an attorney, so, uh, being an advocate for people for workers' rights, being an advocate uh, for victims of police brutality. He had uh, challenged— um, activity of the Ku Klux Klan and other white supremacist organizations in Mississippi. And because of his consistency of work uh, in, the, in the state, many people said he should run for mayor. And the Malcolm X grassroots movement agreed with that, encouraged Shokwe to run, and but decided to organize a different type of black politics there. Uh, we felt the traditional black politics weren't really working for us at this time. So in Shokwe's ward, first before he ran for mayor, um, in his ward when he ran for city councilman in 2009, a people's assembly was organized. And so when you heard the clip, him, him saying the people will decide, uh, that slogan was put into practice by organizing an assembly that would uh, develop his platform. So his platform actually came from the community and not out of his head or not out of our organization. Uh, Shokwe, um, they formed this people's assembly that helped him get elected, formed his platform, but also stayed organized uh, while he was uh, serving in city council to provide him with direction on how he should proceed on policy. So it was a different form of politics that was being pursued, as you mentioned earlier, uh, encouraging participatory democracy, encouraging people to get active and also to become politically educated. Uh, the hope was, and the hope is still, after his election for mayor, that we would organize the People's Assembly. In fact, this may May 2nd through 4th in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, there will also be the new economies conference, Jackson Rising Conference, that will look at new uh, economies, cooperative economic development, things of that nature. Um, and in the legacy of Shokwe Lumumba, we have to continue these initiatives, um, even, though, um, his, uh, even though his untimely death. Um, he, d he died of a, of a sudden heart attack. And um, we, our prayers go out to his family. Uh, we're talking to Kenyale Mojo, who is associate professor and chair of the Department of African American Studies at Georgia State University, a longtime friend and ally um, of uh, Shoko Lumumba, who died suddenly yesterday, the mayor of Jackson, Mississippi. When we come back, we'll also go to Jackson, Mississippi, and uh, speak to people around the country. This is Democracy Now! We'll be back in a moment.